Starting this month, your rent will increase by 300%. What? 300%? If that'll be your course of action, good sir, I shall quadruple your rent of my land. Trouble busters! Damn it, so annoying! Can't you just hurry up and get out of here? Uh, uh, President Townsend, what a nice morning it is today. <laughs> what an annoying little foreign obsessed shop you got here, as per frickin' usual! <laughs> It'll only cause us both trouble if you say such nasty things every day, sir. <laughs> I'm especially annoyed that you dare to rent an entire building, despite the store not being particularly successful. That's why, starting this month, your rent will increase by 300%. What? The 300%? If you can't pay the rent you owe us, get the hell out! B but why? We already have another client who's already paid us a gratuity deposit because they want to use this space, you see? So if you can just leave this place, all will be well once again. Well, more than anything, the fact that I don't like you and everything you stand for in the store is a big factor. <laughs> Up until now, I've been told to leave the building or get the hell out of here almost every day. But I've been patient because I thought of this as some form of professional relationship between my realtor and me. And I thought that one day I'll be able to get along with the president. I guess those feelings of mine were completely meaningless. In that case, I won't hold back anymore. Unforgivable troublebusters. Um, uh, Mr. Mulligan, have you been listening to everything? Yes, of course. Mr. Townsend spoke so very loudly so I could hear everything loud and clear, Miss Thompson. <laughs> What? Who the hell are you? People unrelated to this freaking matter can get lost! Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherman Mulligan, and I'm a lawyer. A lawyer? Why would an esteemed lawyer waste their time in such a god-awful shabby coffee shop? Can you refrain from using such foul language as god-awful and shabby? Much appreciated. From what I heard, President Townsend, you made a unilateral increase in rent without any legitimate reason, and a unilateral request to abandon the premises without any legitimate reason either. I think the reason I don't approve of this coffee shop is good enough to impose these little changes, wouldn't you agree? Unfortunately, no, it doesn't. How about it, Miss Helen? Do you understand now? If you don't want to leave, you'll have to pay the tenant fee that's three times as much as usual. Again, that will not be possible. If you can't pay at all, leave these premises. <laughs> Are you listening to Mr. Mulligan, yo? He's telling you that your reasons and actions will not be possible to accept. If that'll be your course of action, regardless, good sir, I shall quadruple your rent of my land. What? My rent is being unfairly raised by one who manages the building, so to compensate for that loss, I shall raise the rent of this land fourfold starting the same month. What the hell? <laughs> and what in the world makes you freaking think you could do something like that? You don't even own the rights to this land! Oh, I do own the rights to this land. What? Listen to me, and believe me when I tell you that this building is built upon land that is owned by yours truly. What? Well, it's only been a year since you became the real estate president after all, so it's understandable that you never knew this fact. But I absolutely will not forgive you this time. I mean, what happened this time is your fault, you know? Because surely it is! You're still so young, but you already boldly open up a coffee shop on the first floor of this building, and even though hardly any customers come, you so stubbornly refuse to quit! You're just so damn cocky! No, I'm merely working hard to keep afloat. But to begin with, I've had my shop here long before you became the president of the real estate that manages this building, President Townsend. Who cares about that? It's no good if I simply don't approve of it! But... that's ridiculous. I've been getting harassed almost every day since you became president, but is that also because you simply don't approve of me? Of course it is, isn't it? <laughs> what else could it be? My family has been running this coffee shop here for generations, long before you ever took your first steps. 
So you're telling me to be patient since I came later than the existence of this stupid shop, eh? <laughs> well, no, that's not what I mean. But that's precisely the way it sounds to me. I assure you that's not what I mean in the slightest. I just wanted to say that if I'd come here recently, it would have been different. But since this shop has seen generations come and go over the decades, we don't remember anyone saying that they disapprove of its existence. And I doubt one complaint from one person will destroy what it still stands for. Yeah, I think you're wrong there, girly. I honestly don't know, nor do I care how this store was faring until now, but the fact remains that I, Townsend Harrison, am the president of the company managing this building. And because he is now saying that he disapproves of it, you're the one making him feel uncomfortable, and it's your fault it's come to this. That's just too unreasonable. <laughs> Maybe it's because you're not easily ready to leave. At this point, any passersby would have one look at this and consider this whole ordeal to be like one of those cheesy animes that talks about a girl desperately trying to revive a dying family business. <laughs> Excuse me? What? You still don't understand? I'm only telling you to just get out of this building already, see? And I refuse. Can you refuse, though? I'm the president of this building, and I'm telling you to get out, aren't I? <laughs> you have no choice but to leave. I see. Uh, this certainly doesn't require her to leave, you see. See? Even from the point of view of a lawyer who you freaking hired, no less, you have no choice but to leave Miss Ha- Wait, what? Do you know what a legitimate reason even is, President Townsend? Yeah? Oh, well, for the last time, I don't approve of Miss Helen or her stupid store. That's why. And unfortunately for you, that cannot be seen as a legitimate reason. What? Well, why? Why, he asks. I mean, think about it. Have you even prepared a notice of withdrawal of tenancy in the first place? <laughs> a, a, a notice of a, a withdrawal of a tenancy? There's no one who can just respond, sir, yes, sir, to a leave these premises immediately outburst. You understand? That's why you need to present a notice of withdrawal of tenancy in advance. And the reason behind you presenting it to your client must be legally legitimate. More than acceptable reasons to issue a request to withdraw from the premises include reinforcement or reconstruction due to deterioration of the building when a manager of a building has to live in the building due to unforeseen circumstances, when a pet is kept in a property where pets are not allowed, or when rent is overdue. In cases where the tenant is at fault, the reason will be deemed legitimate. And for the last time, as I've been saying, I don't like Helen or what she does with the place. And that's not a legal reason. Such a childish claim will quickly be denied in court. You, what the hell? This is my building, ain't it? And Miss Helen is the one paying the rent, isn't she? So what? This is my building, after all. It's only natural that you follow my rules. Would you please pay the withdrawal fee? Huh? You're unilaterally requesting that I remove myself for your own convenience. So all withdrawal fees, which include the cost of signing a new rental property, the moving expenses, and all other miscellaneous expenses that will be incurred due to the move shall be paid for by you. Who the hell would ever agree to ridiculous terms like that? Why should I have to pay for all that bullshit? Don't you realize you are the one telling Miss Helen to get the hell out of these premises? Shut the frick up! Anyway, starting this month, I'll triple the amount of the rent you must pay. If you don't like that, move out now and pay for everything out of your own pocket. It's a two-for-one deal. Is what he suggests, Miss Helen. But what say you? I see. Well then, this is my land, so I shall see to the arrangements. I shall have this building completely removed. What? Like I said, this is my land, and if your logic works in this world, then you can follow my rules, right? Uh, no, well, um, that's, uh, well, uh, you have no legitimate reason for doing that. So why in the world would you ever do something like that? 
Oh, I have a legitimate reason. It's because you disapprove of me and everything I stand for, right? According to you, President Townsend, that is a good enough reason to have this building removed from my land. Well, uh, well uh, no, no, that uh, you can't. I suppose the knuckleball of death you launched at Helen boomeranged all the way around and struck you in the ass, eh? <laughs> Shut up! But this is a good opportunity, President Townsend. I'll stop being so patient. Uh, what? Hey, Mr. Mulligan, how do you like the background music in my coffee shop? The background music? Oh, you mean the jazz that's playing softly in from a record player? Yes. The volume is kept low enough that it doesn't get in the way of normal conversation, and it's just right to rest and relax. Yes, I think so too, but it seems to sound unbelievably loud and annoying to President Townsend, you understand? As a result, he called the police on me a number of times. Ah, <laughs> a repeating perpetrator of false police reports! None of those reports were false! It's truly annoying! It's so bad sometimes I can't sleep well at night! Well, actually, my coffee shop always closes at 4 p.m., even before the sun begins to set most of the year. So his perception of nighttime is out of whack then. <laughs> then what about the signboard? Yes, by signboard he means the menu board that President Townsend physically dented himself. Right, that one! Wait, no, that's not what I meant! Isn't that what you mean? That's what I mean, but it's not what I mean, if you know what I mean. It's that signboard you're talking about, but I didn't do anything! Huh? huh? It's always protruding out onto the sidewalk. It's seriously in the way of people every day. I've called the police to find out what's going on regarding that as well, you know. I've never lied to the police regarding these reports. No, no they, they were, were false. false. What? And you made reservations under a fake name, only to cancel at the last possible minute. You then made another reservation, then cancelled it again. Over and over and over again, you cancelled so many reservations. I kept thinking to myself, perhaps another last minute cancellation inbound? I began to suspect, but just in case, I had to leave seats open each time. And as a result, we've had some losses, you understand? And more than anything, because of the seats that you took to harass me, people who wanted to take a break after work or come to relax and drink lots of delicious coffee on their days off might not have been able to sit down. That wasn't me! Do you have proof? Show me the money! Here you go. All the phone numbers are the same here. And what does that have to do with this? I'll call this number right here, right now. What? Huh? Hey! Hello? So you are the culprit. It just so happened that the phone number was the same. Do you really want to make me out to be the bad guy, huh? No, I'm not making you out to be the bad guy. You've already made an absolute fool out of yourself, haven't you? Huh? Look at the computer, Mr. Mulligan. No, you could have at least made your name something else at least. <laughs> Is it so bad to talk about the truth? But it isn't the truth, though, is it? You never even tried the coffee from my place before. When you reach a level like me in society, you don't need to drink it to get a good feeling of how it would be. What, what kind of kind pathetic, of pathetic grounds, grounds that is that nonsense founded on? founded on? And I even went and let loose a few Trojan horses inside those computers of yours. What the hell are you doing fixing them so quickly, huh? You trying to get me into a fist fight, woman? Sounds like you're trying to get me into a fist fight, Townsend. You personally came to my store one time to ask me to lend you my computer because yours was malfunctioning, so I reluctantly lent you one that's of utmost importance to the store, you know? And yet you went out of your way to expose it to a virus before returning it to me. I'm just glad I moved all the important data to a different computer just to be safe. Hey, what are you doing? I was thinking of destroying all your store's data to kick your ass out of here. Mr. Mulligan? Yes, Miss Ellen, these three examples of unhappiness bombs are textbook cases of obstruction of business. Huh? What? No, no, what? obstruction of business? Wait, what? 
The act of spreading false information on the internet, the act of repeatedly filing false reports to the police, and the repeated act of making reservations originally intending to cancel in the first place. All of these acts, known as three unhappiness bombs in this scenario, are all suspected crimes of fraudulent obstruction of business under Article 233 of the Criminal Code. What? And then there's the act of telling me to get the hell out of here and whatnot every day that he harassed me. That is a suspected crime of forcible obstruction of business under Article 234 of the Criminal Code. Hey, now, that's enough. And then, Mr. Mulligan? Yes, the worst of all this is the act of intentionally and maliciously infecting a computer used for professional purposes with a computer virus, which is a crime of forcible obstruction of business by means of the destruction of machinery under Clause 2 of Article 234 of the Criminal Code. I do admit I may have gone a little overboard this time, but I never meant to... That's an exaggeration! Are you going to file a report? Of course. Uh, wait, wait, wait a second. Hmm? W well, you see, uh, no need for that. No need for what? No, no, no need for the increase in rent. You need not pay so much. No need. It doesn't have to be three times as much. No need. Ah, uh, is this the police? I get it, I get it. Then let's do this. I'll purposely close down the store I opened right in front of your store. How about that? Yes, officer. This is a criminal case. Oh, okay, then. In that case, how about this? From this month onwards, Miss Helen, you can pay half the rent. How about that? Yes, please. As soon as possible. Uh, why would you do this? Uh, I'm out here offering you a slew of compromises, you know. I was going to let you pay half of the usual rent you have, and yet you're going to get the police involved in this? Is that what you want? Don't you go about thinking your business is going to stay afloat after this whole thing blows over, huh? Well then, Mr. Mulligan, I'll leave it to you. And that adds the crime of threat to your list of misconducts. What? It's not over yet. Additionally, I summon property damage as a reserve crime to back up my final blow. Yeah! The Trouble Buster spell is taking effect. Miss Helen swoops in with another critical hit to the heart. My rent for my land shall remain as it is, 400% increased. <laughs> no way! Uh, uh, hey, 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 Miss Helen, isn't this a bit too much, all things considered? I've been pushed so far already, and you leave the rent of your land to be 400% its original price? My, my life count is already at zero. You know, Townsend. Y yes, ma'am? Why do you think I've been putting up with all the unnecessary bullying you've done up until now? Well, 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 well I, I truly wonder why you have. <laughs> Trap is successful! The perpetrator laughed quite jovially, even though it wasn't the right time to do so. And as a result, he has summoned the most formidable beast of all! Hey, what are you guys looking at? Go away! Scram! This building used to be owned by my grandfather. Your grandfather? Yes, my grandfather. That is, the former president and current chairman of the company that manages this building. What? Then that, that could only mean... Miss Helen, are you the chairman's granddaughter? That's how it is, yes. Well, 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 Miss Helen. <laughs> if that's always been the case, then you should have said so from the beginning. Please don't tell me that if I didn't tell you, that I wouldn't have been able to build a decent relationship with you, eh, Townsend? Please don't say that. Well, because you know, right? The hell do you mean by that, eh? Yay! This coffee shop has been around for generations, even before this building was even constructed. You understand? The current chairman, my grandfather, has the motto of valuing the connections between people. So even if I heard that he had handed over the position of president to you after the building was built, 
I always did my absolute best to keep my grandfather's teachings to heart and wish I could be friends with you, despite you harassing me every day. I've been patiently working hard and learned from my mistakes, and then you opened the same coffee shop right in front of me? I'm going to triple the rent. If you can't pay it, get the hell out of here. You better cool it with messing around, bucko. <laughs> it's not my fault. Huh? That's right, you're the one who's at fault here. It felt like you were testing my patience by opening your damn store every day. So stubborn! You didn't even give my store any tip. You didn't bring me any souvenir. And you acted like you wanted all the attention the world had to offer you. What kind of weird freaking logic is that? But surely that's true. If you had told me from the beginning that you were the chairman's granddaughter, I wouldn't have had to harass you like this. Rather, Miss Helen, you're the perpetrator who drove me to do everything I've done, and now you turn everything and everyone against me? Excuse me? And now we press a certain button, activating a self-destructive schematic that shall put you in an even more difficult position. What? I'm going to demand compensation for the harassment I've received up until now. Uh, what? I shall leave all oncoming attacks to Mr. Mulligan. No, no way! No, 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 please! Additionally, I'll also report this whole incident to my grandfather, the chairman of the company you now represent. Wait, hey, no, please, wait a second. Please spare me that. Hell no. Well then, I'll let you live here for free. You don't even need to pay any rent from now on. How about that? Even if Jesus Christ himself can somehow find it in himself to forgive you for all of your heinous sins, I, for one, will never forgive you until the end of time. Please, Miss Helen, I beg you, help me. I don't want to go to prison or anything. I regret everything. I truly do from the bottom of my heart. For you? No, that's not it. For everyone present. Then repent your actions in prison, you twisted fiend. No, please. After that, he somehow managed to bail himself out of jail and get away with a sentence of probation. But this one incident spread like wildfire, eventually reaching the ears of not only my grandfather, but also his family, friends, colleagues, and subordinates in the workplace. His wife lost all love for him, and his position as president of the real estate agency was scrapped as he was sent back to square zero, at the bottom of the professional hierarchy. As of now, he's been sent to a desolate corner of the country, working multiple jobs to make ends meet, as he pays for the damages he owes. And as for me and my coffee shop, it has a relaxing atmosphere and serves delicious coffee, as usual. After Mr. Mulligan, a very well-respected lawyer in the city, wrote a very positive review, it's now a huge business, full to its capacity every day. I'm actually thinking about opening a second store soon. Trouble Busters.